Welcome to the Art Lady channel. The lesson today is on a self-portrait by Vincent Van Gogh. And this is him in front of an easel. And it was done in January in Arles, France in 1888. And I picked this because this is one of my favorite self-portraits by Vincent Van Gogh. Of course, he did many, many self-portraits. Some say the most self-portraits of any artist. So we're gonna do a simple line drawing first. And this is what the sketch will look like when we're done. And we're gonna do a technique with crayon, oil pastel, and, and watercolor resist um, to get to achieve this look. And I'm doing this with uh, elementary students. So the, the figure that we're gonna make is going to be very simplified, very easy, so that elementary kids can be successful. This is the completed version to the left of the lesson today. So I hope you enjoy creating your Vincent Van Gogh. We're gonna start off with a line sketch of Vincent, and I'm gonna quickly show you um, how to do this very, very fast. And then we'll go go on to using some, some oil pastels first and some crayons. I have some beeswax crayons here that I'm gonna use. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll add our watercolor resist to it to achieve this post-impressionist feel in a painting. To start our sketch, we're gonna be using 12 by 18 paper and we're gonna be holding it vertically. Now we wanna just sketch out this, um, his portrait here real quick. And what I do to simplify this is I start off, I just start right in the center with his nose. So I find the middle of my page and I'm going to go to the left with a small letter C. Now this is approximately the size of the tip of your pinky fingernail, right inside the pinky fingernail. So we're not doing a gigantic one and we're not doing a really, really small one. And we're, if you look on Vincent, you see it's a slight curved C here. Now we're gonna do the nose section where it comes down, the bridge of the nose, and this is almost a U shape, and then we'll just put some lines in here. Now the second side of his nostril is smaller. He's almost three-quarter view. He's, he's twisting his face in perspective, so if you look, we only see one side of his one ear on this side of his head, and then the other side, it's hidden. Um, so this nostril appears to be slightly smaller than that one. So that's something to think about as we make our picture. But we're gonna go ahead and do the U shape here in the center, down and up, almost like a U or slight V. And then we're just gonna connect this area here, just come up and around. Now on the other side for the nostril, it's slightly smaller and it's a backward C. Now we're gonna form the bridge of his nose. So it's slight diagonal up, and then we're gonna slightly curve. And I wanna go up probably about three fingers here. So if I take my fingers, lining them up to the end of the nose here, I wanna come up straight to three fingers. So I'm just gonna mark it right here. And then I'm gonna Connect these lines, slightly going in and then coming out for a bridge. Just slight in and to here. So there's the bridge of his nose. Now I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna lightly sketch in where the eyebrows are gonna go and it's gonna be a slight curve. So it's just gonna come up and over. And I'm gonna skip a space on this side here. Probably about a finger space here. And I'm just gonna slightly sketch where the eyebrows are gonna be. Now directly below this, I'm gonna put in a circle and it's gonna be approximately the tip of, or, or, or probably almost the width of my pinky fingernail. And I'm gonna line it up on this side and I'm gonna do the same. This is going to be the eye, iris of his eyes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do his actual eyelids. So I'm gonna start at the top of the iris and I'm just gonna slide down and slide down on both sides. Slide down and slide down. His eyes are somewhat closed. It's barely peeking out, kind of almost like a beady, if you would describe it as a beady eye, kind of a stare. He's staring um, 
you know, he's looking carefully and at him himself as he's creating his portrait. And I'm gonna just connect the bottoms here. In this portrait, I feel that he is uh, a little bit happier than other portraits that he's done. Almost a little bit of a smile here, I almost find or see. But it seems to be cheerier and happier. Now I'm gonna do the pupil, so I'm just gonna do a black center in here in the iris and it's slightly to the top and then we're gonna start forming his mustache coming off and this is pretty bushy these are just guidelines because we're gonna use some of our colors to fill in texture um, for this but I just want to come from the nose here the inside of the nose and I'm coming down on each side coming from the inside area and down. And then for his mouth, what I did was I just came in here about a, f a little bit less, I'd say less than a finger or maybe the width of a pinky finger, that would be better. And I'm just gonna make a small line here. This is gonna be his lip line and then slightly down, slightly down. Now we're gonna form the bottom of the lip. So I'm gonna put a straight line, horizontal line, and I'm just gonna bring this up. Now this area is the mustache area in here. So we're gonna add lines for texture in here. And it comes down a little bit on this side. And then of course he has the chin here. And all of this will be done with reds and red oranges. So we'll have a variety of color. But if you take your fingers and do two fingers and put a little mark, that's where his chin's gonna end and his beard will come down here. So I'm gonna make a line coming down and then round. And then I'm gonna do the same on this side, down and round. So that's his little chin here. Now we do have some of this kind of sideburns and jaw where he has some of his hair here, part of his beard. So we're gonna fill that in in a minute. Let's go ahead and get the side of the eye in. Here, it's closer. You see the face, we see more on this side, and then the, the view is almost a profile on this side. So if we come near the eye, I'm just gonna put a little dot here. That's where, if you measure the eye across, I'm just gonna skip over a little bit, give him a little bit of flesh here. I'm gonna come around the eyebrow, and I'm gonna come out for a little bit of a cheek, and then I'm gonna come down to his beard here. So I'm going to slowly come out, kind of like in the center of the nose for the cheek, and then bring it back to the beard. This bump here is where he's gonna have his bushy eyebrows here, right in here. Now we're gonna need a forehead and it's slightly diagonal back. It's a curved line though. So I'm coming back and I'm going up about two fingers and then we'll have a round top for his head, but it's slightly diagonal. Now, if I come over about two fingers from the eye and put a mark, this is where the side of the head will, will come up. So I'm gonna come up here, and then I'm just gonna round the top here for his head. He has some, and I'm light, gonna lightly do this. He has this short, spiky hair. Let me show you here. And we're gonna go ahead with our colors and we'll add short spiky hair texture up in there after. So we can even extend it beyond this line. That's why I kind of just do a light marker line. Now we're gonna go ahead and get the ear in here. And we're gonna find the end of the nose and come across our page. And I'm just gonna put a little horizontal line. Now I wanna come slightly diagonal and then I'm gonna round it to the top here and the ear lines up to the eye. So I'm gonna come up, around, and stop. I'm gonna put some inside flesh in here. So I'm just gonna put a line. He's got some dark area here where you see inside and I'm just gonna give a slight C shape and then a curve here. This is down a little bit longer and his lobe comes in here. 
From here, we're gonna, we see some of the neck on this side. So from the ear, I'm just gonna come down and curve. The, now I can connect the beard easily. I want the jaw, I'm gonna come up s slightly diagonal, and then I'm gonna come around here. And then this will be right in here, we'll have some hair. We'll be able to use some crayon texture for hair here as well. So he's looking pretty good. Now we're gonna go ahead and get the jacket in. I have some space here at the top. Like I said, this is 12 by 18 paper. So now I'm gonna slide it up a little bit toward the bottom here. Oops. Yeah. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and form this jacket. What I do is I find the center of the beard and I drop down probably about three fingers and I'm going to put a circle for a button. He has this, it looks like some kind of a, a cloak on. It's probably a work shirt. It has one single button up here. And I'm going to come diagonally around the button and diagonally here. Then I'm going to come up and I'm gonna curve it to the beard. And on this side, I'm gonna come from the button. If you look at the button up at the top, I'm gonna to come around to the neck. On this side, I'm gonna come down and curve in slightly. This is kind of forming the wrinkle in his jacket. Then I'm coming out diagonally to the edge of the page. Here's his back shoulder here. There is another line in the jacket right here. So we can just put a little kind of jagged line here for the stitching, I, I believe, would be on the jacket. And then I do see a little bit of an arm line here. Now we're going to go ahead and put in the canvas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come, if you take the beard, go across the page, and we'll find the center here, <coughs> from where the beard ends. I'm gonna draw a diagonal, slightly diagonal line to the edge of my page. Now I'm going to come down slightly diagonal to the edge of my page. So I'm putting in the canvas. I'm going to take this line, it's gonna be diagonal, and it's gonna be drawn downward toward the edge of the page. So a short diagonal line. This is forming the thickness of the canvas. Now these two lines I want to be as parallel as I can, meaning equal distance. So just take your time and go slow, parallel, as equal as you can. This line is gonna come out this way, parallel again. So that's the thickness of the canvas. See how the canvas is the thick. Now this is the back of the canvas here. So we're just gonna come across, keeping the line parallel with this, so the same diagonal angle. I'm jumping down. It's probably about a finger's thickness. It's a little bit thicker than here. And then I'm going to come down as well, trying to make it as parallel as I can. Now in his picture, he has this crossbar coming up. And I think that's important to add because it helps this composition. Otherwise, you have a big negative here. So we have a crossbar coming up, and this is a bar that supports the canvas. And then I'm just going to do a skinnier line in here. And I like that he signs his name right in here. If you want to sign this, you can. And he does it um, V-I-N-C-E-N-T, and then he does an 88. 19, 1888 is when he did this painting. Now we're going to go ahead and get the top shoulders in here. So we come off of this and we're going to come right to our canvas. So we're going to come off the shoulder. I'm going to make a little curve down first. 
like a wrinkle in the collar area. Come again and down. And then I'm coming right to, so it forms a diagonal line right to the canvas. I wanna put in his paint palette at the bottom. It's more, that's uh, an important part of the picture. That's what uh, kind of makes it my favorite. Along with his almost happy smile, but the paint palette, since I'm an art teacher, uh, I really like, enjoyed this painting because of that. So I want to have that in. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that in. I'm going to start off in this area. I want to start off with a, now if you find the button, drop down to the very bottom of the page. Then I'm going to skip up three fingers and I'm going to put a little mark line here. That's where I'm going to have my paint palette. So I'm going to do a horizontal line. And this is where my brushes are gonna come. So I'm gonna do diagonally up, straight, over just a little bit, and down. This is gonna form one of the brushes. At the end, it kind of fringes out like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to form the thumb that's holding the brush. So I'm gonna do a curve line here. I'm gonna come up diagonal and then I'm gonna come over to the brush. I'm gonna round this area, almost like a backward C curve. Then I'm gonna do a diagonal line, horizontal line, and then I'm gonna curve up. That forms the, let me bring it in closer for you to see, the side view thumbnail. Let me show you on Vincent's. Let's get it, where is it? Let's see if I can show you up close, right there. It's kind of hard to see. When you bring these paintings up in close, they're mainly just dashes and dabs of color. You work so fast that it just appears to be these colors, but when you view it from a distance, they all blend together. Um, now we're gonna come and make the rest of the pad of the thumb, the bend, and then just connect it in. Now the paint palette comes in, connect. Now the other side of the palette is going to come over and I'm going to bring it diagonally down. Now we're going to come from the thumb up here, over and come right off the page. His palette isn't, um, it doesn't appear to be the traditional rounded type or oval shaped palette. It almost looks like a scrap of wood with a hole in it on this one that I'm seeing. And then, of course, you can add blobs of color here when we fill in our palette. Let's get the other side of his fingers, though, here. So I'm just going to come down diagonal. And then I'm going to come over diagonal, down toward the page, leave a little space. And then I'm coming like that off the page. Now, if you have room for the rest of the hand, it depends on how much more room you have, you can continue it here. I just happen to run out of room. Let me show you up close how it ends. You can do the side of the hand and bring it down. I'm not gonna put these little cups in for, this is oil paint or, or um, linseed oil, and this would probably be some turpentine or mineral spirits. But I'm, not, I'm just gonna leave that out. If you want to put it in, you may. Now we have this line here that just needs to come down to the edge and connect. It's part of his jacket. And so there we have just the basic sketch. Oh, I do want to put in his hairline. So let's, uh, let's view it now. I do want to put in the hairline. It kind of looks bald here, which is an important line to stick in together. Um, if you come up from his eyebrows, probably two fingers, or almost dividing in half, but we want a little bit more forehead. I'm just going to put in like a, a curve line here I'm gonna go up, it's kind of a slightly receding, and then to the edge, diagonal down. And then I'm gonna curve around, and I'm. this is kind of just light hair in here. Kind of blends with the forehead. So just a few sketch lines as you come down. We could have a little bit taller. As you add your color, we can come off of this, like I said, to, for a little bit of a spike. He has a little bit more of a head back here but we can continue you know, adding this as we add our color, more rounded a bit here. So I'm just gonna round it a tad like so, and this will be the, 
with the crayon, I can get a little bit more in there for that height of his, of his head. He has quite short hair here in this picture. So there's the basics. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to start in on some color texture. And here's the complete view. It was kind of hard getting in the picture plane from where I had my video set up. But here is the finished line drawing of Vincent Van Gogh's self-portrait. Now, if you want to view the rest of the video, I'm going to show you how we add color to this and then resist it to make it look like this post-impressionist painting of Vincent. I started working up the color, and I want to show you how I did this. First of all, I added a couple more paintbrushes in his hand. And then I started with some darker values here. And I'm following, if you think about the fabric, I'm following the curves of the fabric. So if this jacket's wrapping around him, I'm gonna do short dashes of color coming in the direction of the fabric. So this is wrapping around this way. If you follow like the collar lines, this line. And so I'm just doing dashes of color and then where the, this is like his crease for his arm. So in this area, it's gonna be darker. So you can even use some little dashes of black or gray or dark blue to create a little darker crease area. Here, let's look at where we have the lightest color and white, where the light's coming from the back here and around the shoulder area. So the darker area tends to be toward the middle because I want this lighter color coming across his shoulder. And then I want a lot of white too. The white will show because when we paint over this, the paint will resist, the watercolor paint. So the white's important. I'm gonna put a little bit of white toward the middle here too. So this is how I'm gonna be working up my painting. And I'm gonna show you close up the jacket area here in this section. So I'm gonna work up this and show you. Now I'm gonna give it a light blue base and I'm just using a, a large blue crayon because I wanna make sure that main, a lot of this area is colored in because I only want the, the orange to settle in a little bit into the crack areas. The crayon almost acts as a blending tool as well. And I'm going in the direction like the fabric's wrapped around him. So the lines come around the shoulder, down, and around the shoulder here. And I have it all a light base color. I'm coming back and just adding any more uh, darker areas right on top that I need to bring out because I want some really dark lines to show in here as well. And then I'm bringing back this line here and any other outlines I want to show, pushing really hard with an oil pastel. Bringing back some of these lines. And I'm working pretty quickly, I'm not being that precise. And then any of the white, I want pushing really hard because I want to make sure my white highlights show up nicely as well. So I'm happy with the jacket. Now I'm going to go ahead and start working up the values in the frame area. And I'm going to be using some flesh tones and some uh, medium brown. So first I'm going to give it a base coat of a flesh tone and then I'll work up some of these darker areas on the top. So I'm just going right over it very quickly. See how fast this is? And then I'm going to come back now pushing pretty hard. I'm going to come back with some oil pastels in some medium brown color. I'm tracing over my um, marker lines and then I want some lighter value, a little bit lighter value in here and I'm just doing some horizontal texture here and then I'm going to come down, down vertical this way and then anywhere, a few little darker lines with this medium brown right in here. Now this area is gonna be gray, so I'm gonna work up some white and then a 
or light gray maybe, and then some medium gray, and then hit it on the top with some white. Mm -hmm. So my base will be a light gray. It's supposed to be like a white linen. So just very fast. This is oil pastel. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of white, white on top to make it a gray. So there is that. It's nice. And then if you want some darker gray texture, let's look at this picture. A little bit of darker gray texture. I can put just some darker gray texture lines. Like so. Now I'm going to wor work up the face. So I'm going to give him a very light value peach color as a base coat. Oh, this was kind of dirty here. Which is fine. That won't hurt anything. I just finished giving a base coat to his head, the, fe the flesh, and his beard. So now I'm just going to work up some of the dark values. And you can see how Vincent did short, choppy lines in the direction of the way the beard grew. So he came from the nose down. Just real short, choppy lines of a variety of values from browns to light yellows to oranges to reds. So I'm gonna work up those really quickly, like so. Just little short, choppy lines. And he has some of this in his hair here. And you can have it even spike off a little bit. And then short, choppy, like so. And now I'm working up some uh, adding some red in here to this, just using short choppy color, choppy lines right on top. So the base coat was a light yellow orange. And then I'll show you on his beard here, how I'm mimicking these lines. So where they come from the nose down and then from the mouth down. And then I'll stick a little bit of light browns and grays in here directly underneath the lip. So I'll pick out some, just to show shadow on the lip here. And uh, let's get a lighter value here. That was a bit dark. And I just do little tiny lines placed next to each other very quickly. Almost impressionistic, but a little bit faster paced. This was his post-impressionistic style. And then in the hair too, just some lines. And you can even come out past the head. Just short, choppy lines. And the one I'm using now is an oil pastel. So I'm gonna finish working up this, and then I'm gonna also work up the values, the shadows like this with gray, just little light lines on the side here of his face, tiny, small lines. And on this side of the nose, little light shadow lines and then values I did a very light peach value for his face now I'm just going to do small dashes of medium value peach little just short choppy lines and a little bit darker where it blends to the facial facial hair here because it blended right in on the side of his cheek. Let me show you here. See how we have a little bit of a shadow coming in here. And then a little bit darker in here too. So just short little lines of color and little lines of color right here. So I'm gonna work up the face and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Right now I'm working up the eyes and eyebrows and when I looked up the color of his eyes on the internet I found contra contradicting evidence of eye colors from brownish to bluish to greenish to kind of a combination of everything. So I kind of made it a sage with a little hint of brown and green in it. This is a golden brown that I'm adding in his ear and then I'm going to bring up a a little bit of a darker orange inside this area and then around here. Now I'm going to work up more, just more lines in his hair.
And when I'm done that, I will show you what it looks like. Okay, now I'm just working up some of the last darker colors using this dark charcoal gray. I added the dark in his beard and the dark details in his head or hair and a little bit of on the side here. I put in the white, little white shirt showing through here. I also worked up the hand in the same values as the face and then I took some light gray and I just kind of brushed over it lightly with my my oil pastel and kind of blended it and made it a little bit darker like his hand. In. I'm doing light gray right now behind Vincent. Even using the side like this of the crayon gives it that texture, that concrete texture look that matched Vincent's. Like this. and then I'll do some white on top to blend it in. When I'm working up the white, I'm using the side of it and just doing it in a circular motion like so. And that blends it in nicely, the background. Right there. Let me show you what it looks like. I worked up the eyes a little bit more uh, using different values of brown and a little bit of black, gray, um, and some tan. And then I worked up some of the <clears throat> details in his kind of eyebrows, bushy eyebrows, with some uh, brown as well to bring out um, the shadows in his face. And I think I'm ready now for some paint. So I'll stick some watercolor on top of this and we will resist our Vincent Van Gogh. What I've started to do is I've added some watered down um, watercolor paints over the jacket in orange. So I dip into my water and I barely touch my paint. And if it's too dark, then I just wash my brush and add a little bit of water. And I'm just going right over the jacket. And this is gonna settle in in all the little cracks and beat up and resist and give that little orange speckled look to his jacket. Barely touching that paint. I'm gonna wipe some off actually, just pick it up from the edge. And then it'll just settle into the cracks and it'll give that little, that textured effect like you see here in the jacket. And I'm gonna add some black resist to this area very lightly but you can finish this off with whatever color resist you want to on top or not you don't have to use the resist that's up to you I'm just gonna lightly hit some black on top of the frame to make it a little bit older looking right here and then I'm gonna do some orange in his hair just to bring out that brighter color here and his beard as well. It just fills in all the little cracks that I've missed with the oil pastel. I'm gonna do it lightly on his face. Barely any color. And around his neck and then I pull off any little any extra beads I'll just pull right off I have a soft I'm using a very very soft brush which helps pull off any color any extras any extra bead that beads up and I may do Vincent left his background very gray so, but I may put a little bit of um, some blue up in this corner area, some muddied blue, some blue with a little bit of black, just in this area, and then wash it down with water. 
some water just to give it more interest in this corner. Let's see if you can see here. And what it's gonna do is it'll absorb into any area that I've missed with the crayon, or the oil pastel rather. And then I add mostly water to it. So it's just a great muddied gray pulling the color in right there. And then this will dry up nice. Oh, I have some splashes here. Just gonna get rid of them, blending it in. And actually I'm just using some of this muddied water here, which gives it a little bit of a color in the background. And this will dry. This is a darker area it appears right now, and that's from being wet through this paper. And so it'll end up drying nicely. I do want to put some, and I think I'm going to use a brown on the top for the paint palette. I'm just going to use some, some brown resist down here. And I may brighten up some of this orange right in this area. And I'm going to bring it over to the shoulder area. The orange is important because it forms a complementary color with the blue that he did in his picture. So I really want that to stand out. So I'm layering it again because my orange started to dry. Right there. And I think I'm happy with it. There. And there you have your Vincent Van Gogh self-portrait.